Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we're replacing the flawless pool. Oh, wow. We're about to hit the fever pitch of spookiness. Ghosts are around every corner, and we don't mean the friendly type that revives you after taking too much damage. Sadly, that means that it's almost time to start packing up the tower decorations and saying goodbye to Eva Levante. It's the final week of Festival of the Lost, and you have until reset on Tuesday, November the 2nd to finish your books, eat your candy, and wrap up any unfinished business you have with the event. We've recently fixed up some issues with candy and spectral page drops from public events and Trials of Osiris. So if you're still jamming out some pages to finish your book, don't sleep on these activities. Throw on a mask, eat some candy, and earn some rewards. While you're extracting whatever loot you can from the Headless Ones, Trials of Osiris will start up tomorrow and run until Festival of the Lost ends at reset as usual. We gotta fix in so you'll still earn pages even if you lose the match. And that's not all we're changing. Trials matchmaking changes! Again! What is it, like the third time? The last few weekends of Trials of Osiris have been a bit quieter in terms of changes. This was by design. We wanted to give players a few weekends of steady play before making any more significant changes or testing out another lapse weekend. This gave our team some great data for how the trial changes are doing, how players are engaging with the activity, and what we could prioritize changing in the future. A quick recap of the stats from the last few weeks shows everything to be steady to. Matchmaking times are consistent with past weeks. Blowout rates drop slightly week over week. This is consistent with lower skill players not playing as much. Average hours played per player remains consistent across skill levels. Overall player count went down each week, but this is expected during the portions of the season and it's consistent with the past trials and Iron Banner performance. We still don't see any evidence of widespread flawless card resets to avoid the flawless pull. Less than 0.5% of cards played were reset while still flawless and above three wins. Even still, the impetus to do this should be removed starting this weekend. More on that below. Now, we look to freelance. Last weekend, we gave players a strictly solo queue option for trials. We entered the weekend with some assumptions on how the population could split, what might happen to matchmaking times, and a few questions on how to offer freelance options in the future. Here's a quick recap from the team on how things went, what we learned, and what we're thinking about for the future. So starting with freelance. So this past week, we opened the freelance queue so that solo players could consistently play against other groups of solos. How'd that feel? We had over a million games played played in each playlist this weekend, with slightly more games played in the base Trials of Osiris playlist. Average hours played for the lower skill players is up quite a bit over the past weeks, while the average to top end has almost the same hours played. Interestingly, players who played in a fire team some of the time and solo some of the time played almost three times as long this weekend as players who either played exclusively solo or in a fire team. All right, so we got a chart right here. Average Trials games per Trials player. So player numbers, 244,000 freelance exclusive players, 120,000 fire team exclusive players, 220,000 played both solo and in a fire team, which is exactly what we did. 25.5% of players went flawless, lower than any revamp week, likely fallout of matches being fairer. If it doesn't drop below 20% for a weekend, the lighthouse should still feel obtainable. Average matchmaking times were consistently around 50 seconds for full fire teams and solos, and regularly were about 100 seconds for duos. The Sunday Flawless pool adds about 10 seconds to flawless player matchmaking, and we were seeing some worrying spikes in matchmaking times for some of the smaller sub pools post flawless pool split. Yeah, look at the uptick though, guys. I just wanted to just point out week one was high. It dropped off in week two. Week three, pretty consistent, but still week five to week six, that is a noticeable increase. And it definitely wasn't because of the map. I mean, Cauldron is not a popular map. It's 100% due to freelance. Now, blowout rates by the hour. Blue is actually October the 5th. Orange is October the 12th. Match outcomes this week. Freelance base, 5-0 games, 25.1%. From freelance, 30.2. 5-1, 5 5-2, 5-3, 5-4. Ah, I gotcha. Relatively the same. But if you notice there, there was definitely more 5-2, 5-3, and 5-4 games in the freelance playlist, meaning more competitive games. Now, one thing we aren't happy with is the team balance. And we notice that how the solo playlist isn't doing a great job balancing two teams when there aren't any fire team mismatches. For trials, it's currently just picking teams randomly. We're going to be looking very carefully of how teams are selected over the next few weeks and hopefully have a better balance the next time freelance rolls around. This is one of the downsides of not using skill-based matchmaking in trials. In situations where skill would be helpful to balance two teams of solo players, it isn't even a data point the system can look at. Speaking of which, freelance futures. We like the overall outcome and vibe of freelance queue, and both playlists seem to have a viable amount of players. We are looking at running 
running freelance occasionally for the remainder of season 15, but are still trying to determine what feels right. We will let you know. Long term, we are exploring some single playlist solutions. Preferential matching of full fire teams against other full fire teams, duo plus solos against other duos and solos. We don't have specific release target for this yet, but it will not be prior to season 16. Interesting that they mentioned skill-based matchmaking. I wonder if they're actually going to end up changing that. Like maybe a future freelance playlist might come with skill-based matchmaking. Moving on though to the flawless pool changes. The flawless pool, which we have been enabling Sunday at reset time, has some very positive benefits. It raises overall match quality, blowout rates, etc. significantly, and it raises the overall win rates of solo players. However, it has some drastic downsides. For players who struggle and manage to just barely go flawless, it is a steep cliff to then only play against players who have already gone flawless that week. It also incentivizes behavior that is at odds with the mode and reward system, like resetting a flawless six-win ticket to keep getting easier matches but worse rewards. It also creates social friction where players need to decide between playing with the friends or playing for rewards. Lastly, the timing. 10 a.m. Pacific on Sundays is awkward if you live anywhere but the Americas. So starting tomorrow, we are rolling out a new system and leaning into weekly performance metrics. Whenever you match in trials, in addition to trying to match with people with the same number of card wins, you will also attempt to match with people who have roughly the same number of overall wins for the weekend. If you can't find anyone to match against, it will eventually expand out to find you a less similar match. Holy crap. For the PvP gods who go flawless 10 times a week, they will end up matching with other players who have, for example, 70 plus wins on their cards, no matter how they got them. For the average team who gets a lucky flawless in on Friday or Saturday on the first card, well, they will be matching against other players with around seven wins, no matter how they got them. We are hoping this will give us many of the benefits of the flawless pool system, somewhat fairer matches without the significant downsides. Specifically, there should be no major inflection point where everything is smooth prior to a win, and then everything is overall challenging after. Ah, so again, what they're going for is like a transitional or, or a consistent transition into sweatiness. As the weekend goes on and you accumulate more and more wins, your matches will get sweatier and sweatier without having like this wall where the moment you jump over it, you're in sweaty territory. While this allows us to remove the flawless pull, it does have a potential downside. Longer matchmaking times. We think there is a reasonable trade-off here between match quality and matchmaking time. Average trials matchmaking times currently sit at around 50 seconds. Over the next few weekends, we're going to be looking at how much matchmaking time goes up and how it affects the matchmaking quality. The outcomes of the previous non-lab weeks were games overall, percentage, fire team versus fire team, all solos, 5-0 games, 5-1, 5-2, 5-3, 5-4. okay. Yeah, you can definitely see there how consistent it is. Bungie notes under it though, in an ideal world, we want to get each of those numbers as close to 20% as possible. But we would rather see more 5-4 and 5-3 games and outcomes than 5-0, 5-1. Yeah, that's what they want, guys. They, they want that 20% split between these three different categories, but primarily similar to like what Bungie used to do back inside of Destiny 1. Bungie likes games that are like 50-49 or 99-100. They don't like mercies. They don't like games where people just get clobbered over and over again. And to be honest with you, I don't either. Now, as always, we're going to be listening closely to your feedback, as well as looking at aggregate stats to continue tuning matchmaking for trials to strive for the best experience possible. Guys, this is one of those changes that we really won't recognize until well into the weekend. And I'm talking like maybe Sunday, Monday, after we've got like 20, 30, maybe 40 wins accumulated for that weekend. Depending on how long it will keep you in matchmaking before it actually kicks out those parameters, that's worrisome. I think for the average player, this is going to be good for them. I do think that for the person that runs carries, this is definitely going to affect them. As previously, they would actually do all of the runs before Sunday or just keep resetting their card throughout the entire weekend. Now they won't be able to avoid that. Those wins will be tacking to their score throughout the weekend, thus making their games harder and harder. Again, ideally what Bungie wants, considering the freelance game mode itself, they want players to be able to go into trials without needing a carry and to eventually work their way up to flawless themselves organically. And that's the growth that Bungie's looking for is for that organic growth. Now moving on, plus one. It's been a minute since we've had the pleasure of introducing a new community manager. Alas, the time has come. We are expanding our team and have a new CM joining our ranks. Please give a warm welcome to 
Liliana, aka Hippie. So from Hippie, greetings, Guardians. To say I'm excited to be here would be a massive understatement. My love for Bungie started long before we became Guardians, back in Pathways into Darkness days. It grew with Marathon, the Myth, Oni, and of course, Halo and Destiny. The evolution of shooters, the humble Chicago beginnings, and the growth scene since then is inspiring. And to be a part of it, life-changing. I'm so excited to be here and part of a studio that has accomplished so much in the last 30 years, especially with how Destiny 2 has grown since its release. I'm not alone in being just a little bit in love with my guardian, and I can't wait to continue adventures alongside you all. Damn, so she's been around for a hot minute, like since the beginning. As a recently converted Titan main, sorry, I'm right there in the trenches with the best of them. From fighting off cabal hordes to feeling conflicted about taking out Fallen, after seeing how freaking cute they are as little balls of adorableness. Every week is a new adventure in Destiny 2. As this experience continues to evolve into something truly special, I look forward to tackling the challenges, the triumphs, and those frustrating as all heck first raid runs with the rest of the community and the amazingly passionate team here. I also can't wait to share some pretty impressive war stories with you all, even if jumping puzzles are still the bane of my existence. All right, well, welcome to the team, Liana, and a Titan main at that, hell yeah. Now, Cosmo did stay down here before you ask, no, DMG aren't going anywhere. We'll be helping Hippie learn the ropes and get settled into the months to come. So be nice and don't overwhelm her with questions right out the gate. Yeah, that was gonna be my next question, right? This makes sense though, because remember we had Deej, DMG, and Cosmo, but Deej left. It still hurts, man. Outside of that, there was a hot fix that went out today, specifically targeting Telesto, as well as Raju's harness, as both of these exotics have now been fixed and re-enabled. You know, it's funny, I think Cheese Forever just put out a video saying, hey, all glitches except one got fixed. Regardless, it's kind of unfortunate. You can no longer attach Telesto boats to allies. Now it actually impact and detonate, which is super unfortunate. I love to send in a guardian on my team with Telesto bolts all over them. It was a beautiful thing to behold. Bolts also can no longer be shot and destroyed, and the bolt lifetime has been reduced from 10 seconds to now five seconds when spawned on the environment. Proximity to enemies still detonates. Unfortunate? You see, man, this is what happens. We get carried away with all the bugs and stuff. Telesto was breaking the game. God dog it. Outside of that, the mini screeps for Hollow Lair got a fix where they no longer burrow themselves into the ground and then pop up out of nowhere. I don't care. There's still going to be John Screeba in my eyes, right? Now, as a final note here from Cosmo, with Festival of the Lost coming to a close, we are nearing the end of the scheduled seasonal beats for a bit. And so it's time for free play. Next week, Saladin will be hosting Iron Banner. So mark that on your calendars if you need some quick pinnacle drops or want to hunt some rolls on Iron Banner weapons. After Iron Banner ends next week, we will still have trials going throughout November with new matchmaking changes mentioned in this swap. You can also use this time to catch up on some catalysts, knock out some triumphs, or finish anything else taking up space in your quest log. We have some fun stuff planned for our 30th anniversary on December the 7th. It's going to be a great time to play some Destiny. Love, Cosmo. All right, guys, that is your twab for this week. Big changes coming to trials. Iron Banner's coming next week. Telesto got slapped. It's probably still going to end up breaking the game, though, somehow. For those that are running the Corrupted Nightfall Strike for this week, we did make a guide for it. But as always, it's like a couple days go by, and then we find an even better strat. So, an updated guide to the Corrupted Nightfall will be dropping tomorrow. We were previously beating the Nightfall in like 20 minutes. Now we're getting down to like that 13 to 14 minute mark. So it's pretty good. So we'll be uploading that tomorrow. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.